coming. Sure is. 10-14. Like I told you, Lonnie, right on the button. How about that, boy, huh? Big old train. It's like the ones you used to chase, huh? Come on, boy. Get in there. Got a dome car. Yeah, I see it. Got your ticket? Pocket. Nah, ten into these, will you? Half through them already. <laughs> yeah, the easy half. <laughs> oh, that's pretty heavy. Better let me carry it. There you go. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Climb aboard, Lonnie. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. Looks like a city fella, all right. <laughs> a college man, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Lonnie, good luck to you. Thank you, Mr. Sears. You make your own luck here. Thanks, Dad. Yes. Six mercaptopurine. It may help retard the deterioration of cell tissue. I'm not sure I want it retarded, Barton. Emma, I wish there was something else I could do. Something anyone could do. But leukemia is still a mystery disease. Well, maybe Lonnie will go on to medical school and find a cure. He might. He's a good one. There is something, though. Name it. Lloyd. I don't want him to know. Emma, I told you there'll be infection, anemia, you'll bruise badly, have internal bleeding. Bare truth is, I don't think you can make it very long alone. I understand that, Barton. There's no need for him to suffer, too. Lonnie got off all right? Yeah, probably put away that lunch you packed by now. He sure was burning fuel. It's wonderful if he's so eager. Yeah. You know, Em, turn them loose is what racing is all about. If we've done our job right up to here, he'll be fine.
This month's Esquire? Esquire? The magazine. Oh, yeah. No. Well, I got a copy. You're not gonna believe it. Here, check this out. What about that? Call. Well, you think hard. I told you you wouldn't believe it. Here, you made all steam. Second thing. Well, hey, second team, all state. Got a couple of numbers. Want to see if you can score some points tonight? Oh, come on, Roy. Can't just call up a girl I don't even know. Hey, this is college. The girls here after the same thing you are. I don't think I can. I mean, I've never done it before. I mean, you know, call up a girl I, I don't know. Sure you can. I did. She sounded great, too. Name's Bonnie Jo Jensen. Here, I'll give you the number of the girl that wasn't home. No, Roy, Roy that's OK. Yeah, take it. I got to get down to Bubba's anyway. Bubba's? That's a hamburger joint, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm going to be working there. Coach Davis set it up for me. I figure I get free eats and spending money. And if I make the team, my dad won't have to worry about me, so. Yeah, I guess. With classes, and homework, and basketball, and work, too. Whew, sure doesn't leave a lot of time for all the great looking women around the place. Well, Chef, hi, boy. Hi, yes. A good boy. Am I home? In the kitchen. Then he's not homesick. Well, he didn't sound it. He was just bubbling over like a spring. He likes the campus. He likes the boarding house. He likes his roommate. He likes his job. And what about his classes? Oh, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't even ask Grace. I mean, I was so glad to hear his voice and to know he was all right. I'm not seeing his adjustment is not important, but I want to hear about those classes pretty soon and his marks. I'll tell him to write to you. Oh, good heavens, no. He's got enough writing to do, and he's had enough questions from me to last him a lifetime. No, just remember to ask him about it next time you talk, and, and then remember to tell me what he says. I will. Lloyd missing him much? You know how close they are? He's proud, though. Proud is the first day he held him. I'm so happy for you both, Emma. You're good parents. Thank you, Grace. You've taught so many children. Do you ever wish you'd ever had your own? What do you mean, they're all mine? I'm part of them anyway. <laughs> but your son, Money. He's the one I would have wanted if I could have had my choice. All right, I hear you. I hear you. He's working too, you know. Well, don't mess with the linebackers. 
They were undefeated last year. Yeah, I bet. You really like that pink sweater, huh? I think she's in my American Lit class. She is. And there's more poetry in that walk than you're going to come across all year. You know her? That is Bonnie Jo Jensen. The one you called? The one I'm taking out Friday night. Are you serious? Better than that, she's serious. Got to do me a favor, Wells. Roy, I got two papers of my own. I got to get No done. paper. This is important. What is it? I need the room. What? I need the room Friday night. The room? What for? No. My room? Uh-uh. Your room? It's our room, remember? What happens if you get caught? Caught? I won't get caught. Got your word on that, right, Roy? Come on, Wells. You saw her? The pink sweater. She's a walking, talking pinup for crying out Roy. loud. And she wants to walk right into this house Shh. Friday night. Right into our room. Shh. Our room. You really think she looks like that, huh? I'm telling you, Wells. Twins. Wow. You're not going to make me pass that up, are you? Morning, Emma. Morning, Clyde. Letter from Lonnie. Oh, thank you. Nothing else but some advertisers. Well, nothing else I need. <laughs> Missed you at church on Sunday. That cold's really got a grip on you, huh? Well, I I'm feeling better now, thanks. Well, you take care, Emma. Thank you, Clyde. Say hello to Ruth. We'll be looking for you on Sunday. And uh, Lloyd, too, if you can collar him. <laughs> I don't think that call has been made yet. <laughs> oh, we'll get him there one day, Em. Why, Wells, I'm not set up for that sort of thing. Insurance and all, you know what I mean? Bubba, it's only for tonight. I mean, they're gonna be through painting the room and all tomorrow, and you got that extra cot set up in the back. Hey, Wells, you got something cooking. That's none of my business. You wanna start cooking it in my place, so it is my business. You know what I mean? What? Hey, if you're short, I can advance you enough to get a room down at the wagon wheel. Now, it's not gonna cost much, and it ain't much. Bubba, oh, that's not it, I swear. I'm not the one who, well, it's just kind of complicated. Just you don't know how to register, right? Register? Mr. and Mrs. usually does it. A service app, <laughs> OK? <laughs> yeah, sure. Bubba called you Wells. You Lonnie Wells? Yeah, I'm Brad Sheldrake. I know. Yeah. I, I've seen you play. Which Davis says you're the best freshman he's ever recruited. Really? No. But you look like you can stand some good news. Oh, hey. <laughs> Listen, what <laughs> what you heard Bubba talking about, that, that that's not what you think. <laughs> what happened? That flake Gibbs conned you out of the room? How'd you know that? I heard you live together. He's hustling somebody I know pretty well myself. Fact is, if I hadn't bailed out on a date with her tonight, you wouldn't be an orphan. <laughs> hey, maybe I can help you out. That way, I'll rock you. Sure your sister won't mind? Hey, she's cool. She'd have to be to share it apart with the kid brother, right? I guess. You sure she's going with you to folks tonight, right? Hey, it's a party. 40th anniversary. Can't miss that. Come on. Carol? Rock company. Just a sec.
my sister Carol. Carol, this is Lonnie Wells. Hi. Lonnie? Nice to meet you. Yes, it is. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I mean, he's a freshman. Brad told me about your roommate. Well, you're welcome to stay the weekend if you want. We won't be back till late Sunday night. Thanks. No, uh, it's just tonight that got all fouled up. Well, I've got to get myself put together. Uh, Brad, show Lon where to find what he needs. Sure. You like jazz? Huh? Jazz. Carol's got a great collection. Oh, uh... I don't know much about it. Well, just treat yourself. Uh, Hi-Fi works just like any record player. Uh, and there's TV. Date? Yeah. All this stuff's Carol's. She's got a lot of class. Yeah, I can tell. I gotta tell you something. The coach did say you're the guard we need to take us all the way. I'm really glad you decided to come here. Oh, so am I. We're sitting at our table. Well, so what? We uh, how's that? Time anyway. Fine. Yeah, right up until 11 o'clock. Oh. That's when you have to take the little cousin home. Oh, Do you yes, really think so? Oh. You think it's a good thing Lonnie did? didn't inherit my coordination. He'd never have a scholarship to play basketball. Hey, let me have a look at that. No, no, it's nothing. I keep banging myself up like this. You're liable to trade me in for a new model. Yeah? Take a good look at that truck I drive? Lloyd Wells, are you comparing me to a truck? No, I'm just saying that you're both pretty well built. Oh, you want anything? <laughs> Another cold one. Where's my coat? right here. Oh, oh, thanks very much. My wallet, my wallet. You have wallets on the sink. <laughs> Who put my wallet on the sink? I did. I found it on the floor. <laughs> oh, oh, we yeah, are. This is darn cool. And the coded things keep you dropping. <laughs> See, now my, my car keys. They're in the car. The car keys in the car. <laughs> the <door's laughs> <right there. laughs> Harriet, I, I know that. Come on, dear. We've got to hurry. Grandma, aren't you going to stay here and help Ricky? I think I'd better go and help you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let me tell you what happened the other night. You're not going to believe it. I don't want to know about the other night, OK? You sore? Hey, you didn't have to do it, you know. I mean, if you really didn't want to, oh. you could have said, OK, OK, I muscled you a little, maybe. Yeah. I'm sorry, all right? Forget about forget it. Forget it. How can I forget it? You're my best friend. What about Bonnie Jo Jensen? Hey, listen, you're not going to believe it. I still don't want to hear about it. <laughs> oh, well. yes, you do. Well, yes, you do. God, you're not going to believe it. I mean, I didn't believe it, and I was there. You know that Esquire? Well, Bonnie Jo sees it laying there, see? And she says, oh, man, you're not going to believe it. I know you're not. You're not going to believe it. She says, <laughs> you're a liar, Roy. No, she did yeah. not say that. Yes, she, she did. did. I don't believe it. face. I said it. I don't believe you. Yeah. This is your next assignment by a contemporary author, J.D. Salinger, and it's called The Catcher in the Rye. How many of you have heard of it? How many have read it? Now, what prompted you, Mr. Uh, Wells? Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, my uh, high school teacher, Miss, Miss Ferris. 
she said it was the best American novel written in a, in a long time, so. I happen to agree with her. Did you like it? Well, yes, sir, I did. Sort of reminded me of uh, Huck Finn in a way. In what way is that? Uh, well, this, this Holden Caulfield, he's, he's the, the character that tells the story, the, the one that wants to be a catcher in the riot. Uh, well, he, he's, he's sort of a rebel like Huck. He runs away too. Well, he, uh, he, he runs away from a, a private school he goes to back east. That's all different and all, you know, where, where he comes from, the, the kind of adventures he has, but, but um, it, uh, <laughs> it, it still reminded me of, of Huck, you know, in a way. Mm-hmm. And what would you say the theme of the book is? The theme, sir? The abstract concept that Salinger is asking us to examine in the light of our contemporary social values. Um, honesty? Not bad, Mr. Wells. Not bad. Hours. Then the books. I'll see you tomorrow. Two o'clock sharp. Coach. All right, coach. All right. Hey, Ruby. Looking good today. I think you scored some heavy points with old man Davis. He was licking his chops watching you sink those 20 footers. You weren't so bad yourself. Shoot, man. Corby to cut me tomorrow if you had a bigger turnout. Bro, you got the size. You just need to work, that's all. There's that word again. <laughs> Come on, let's go one on one for a while. I can't, I got a date. Bonnie Joe. Get your heart out. Hey, hey Wells, come on. Let's go 20. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Bring it's... it in. Hey, uh, Carol says thanks for cleaning up the place. I didn't do much. Well, I made you look good. I never do anything. Hey, I told you she's working on her PhD, didn't I? No. Really? Yeah. yeah. Psych. That's great. Yeah, I said she's always analyzing everybody. Hey, you know what she said about you? Me? Ah. Uh, psyched you, Wells. But you really want to know what she said about you now, don't you? Yeah, she didn't say anything. Oh, yes, she did. What? She said she thinks you're cute. Cute? Ah. It's too zip. Cutie. Hendricks gave me. I, I dropped them. Huh. Huh. Six more traps of purity. What's that? Well, that, that's arm. It's fortified. Uh, there's something I want to show you. What's this? Well, that's for headaches. Come on, Lloyd. 
Turkadan. Lloyd, there is something I want you to see. Hmm. Well, what do you think? <sighs> Where did all this come from? Nail order. Gosh. Curtains, uh, slip covers, lampshade, new rug. You like it? Well, it's real nice. Well, you always said it should be green. Well, uh, what brought all this about? Well, holiday time is coming up, and Lottie's going to be coming for Thanksgiving. I just thought I'd liven things up a bit. How about you? You feeling a little more lively? Well, th those pills are helping a lot. Not that I can see. That knot on your leg isn't looking any better at all. Well, southern bells are supposed to be delicate, remember? You've been a southern bell all your life. You've only been black and blue like this lately. Now, if those pills are having some effect, they're not supposed to. I want to know about it, and I want it stopped. Lord, I'm fine. I just need a little rest. You call this rest? If you want to keep me in bed all day, Lord Wells, you're just going to have to keep me there yourself. Well, maybe you are feeling a little better at that. I thought we could even give the house a fresh coat of paint. Paint? Hasn't been but three years since I last painted. Well, we could change the trim. Something bright and happy. Emma, are you happy? You always make me happy. Now I know you're stringing me. Well, almost always. Could be Lloyd, please. We'll see. Lloyd. <laughs> oh, Grace. You all right? Just some back pain. Uh, <laughs> guess I forgot how much work Lonnie did around the place, so I started trying to do it all myself again. No complaints about growing old, Lloyd. I got a head start on you, you know. No complaint. Okay. How's Lonnie? No complaints from him either. Emma? Well, uh, you know Emma. Any trouble she has, we'd be the last to know about it. Well. Tell Lonnie I said hello. Well, he'll be coming home for the holidays. You can tell him yourself. Oh, good. I'm looking forward to that. Always good to see you, Grace. You too, Lord. Told me they were iron pills. Doug Budding at the drugstore told me that Percodan stuff is for pain. And that other bottle, that uh, six uh, mercaptopurine, is for a disease. Now, I want to know what that disease is. Doug didn't tell you. He told me to ask you. Now, I'm asking you, Bart. What the hell's going on? Lloyd, I understand how you feel. Oh. No. No, I really do. But you've got to understand my professional position. I cannot discuss Emma's medical problems without her permission. You're supposed to use that profession of yours, Bart, not hide behind it. Emma is my patient, Lloyd. Not you. I pay the bills! Is that a threat? No. No, hell no. I'm sorry, Lloyd. <sighs> I can understand why you can't say anything, but why should she shut me out after all these years? Unless she's as scared as I am. Hey! Now, I don't mind taking your money, Lloyd. You ain't worn out the guarantee on the paint I sold you three years ago yet. I don't want the paint I got. I want something bright. I want the brightest gold darn color you got. Bright, huh? How about chartreuse? Chartreuse? Yeah. What the hell is that? Oh, sort of a hot yellow green. 
bright as hell. Like an electric limeade. Limeade, huh? Trim it out with, with some of that Chinese red. You got yourself one fancy eye stopper, I tell you. <sighs> or an upset stomach. How about a nice shade of lemonade instead? Pink or yellow? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Boy, oh boy, there's nothing in the whole world smells that good. Or it tastes as good as it smells. Well, I know most people are having pumpkin tonight and mincemeat. There's not a lot of people that has a mom that cooks your apple pie. Well, we've had so much turkey, we don't have to eat it right away. Well, maybe we don't, but I do, thank you. Lloyd? <laughs> Just not strong enough to push myself away. <laughs> oh. Uh, Emma. Oh. Whoa, whoa, uh, let Lon have that piece, yeah? Uh, I just want a sliver. Yeah, so we all go to bed, huh? Well, you don't have to worry about it all disappearing tonight. Take two. Thanks, Mom. Please. Anything special you want to do while you're home? Yeah. Dad? Mm -hmm. How about packing into the lake for a couple of days, huh? See if those brownies are as big as last year? Yeah, sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> I bet I'm not so sure I can get away. Why not? Well, I gotta get that old tractor running. I can do that for you. No, no, it's your vacation. Besides, you know Clem Barker? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's got trouble with his generator, and I told him I'd give him a hand and see if I could get the thing working right. Well, Lloyd, it's a Thanksgiving holiday. You didn't say anything about helping Clem. <laughs> Forgot about it. <laughs> well, it couldn't be all that important then. Well, uh, not to me, maybe, but... I imagine it is for Clem. Well, how many times is your son going to ask you to spend a few days with him? There'll be more days, right, Lon? Yeah, sure. Well, not enough. You spend them with him, man. The way I figure it, you got days and days to catch up for all the time we spent together hunting and fishing and working side by side. didn't do that to hurt you, you know. Doesn't matter. Well, it matters that you don't hold it against him. I just thought he'd be happy to see me, that's all. He's been like you used to be on Christmas morning. Sure took down the tree in a hurry. He loves you. I know. Now don't, don't ever doubt it. Okay. Promise me that. Mom. Promise. <laughs> Okay. Cross your heart. Cross my heart and hope to die, okay? May I have this, please? You know what I think? What's that? I think we ought to pay a visit to Miss Ferris first thing in the morning. What for? Because you wouldn't be going to college at all if she hadn't helped you get ready for it. Yes, ma'am, I know that. I just, I meant, why tomorrow morning? Because there's no reason not to. And you never know if you'll ever get around to the things you put off. Pretty heavy philosophy there. A simple truth. Lon, I'm so happy you talked to Carl. Well, yes, ma'am. Emma. Oh, thank you. We were just glad you were home. Oh, the odds of me being here are pretty good. You sure have been a lot of places, though. Yeah, travel has meant a lot to me. All of those came from different countries? Mm-hmm. You know, I lived in Europe for two years before I came back here to teach. Then I cruised the South Pacific. That's where all those masks come from. Huh. Where did those come from? China? No, Burma. 
Yeah, and these are from Ceylon, and this little ivory piece is from India. This is from Nairobi. Ah, but this, this is from China. It's 11 centuries old. Here, hold it. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to hold it. <laughs> I don't even want to touch it. <laughs> Come on. Go ahead. Come on, feel how delicate it is. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's really light. Yeah. Never been so scared I'd drop anything since the last pass in the state finals. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a thing, Willan. Well, it's got to be a priceless thing, though. It's worthless if it can't be shared, like any work of art. Well, I'd still feel better if you held it. <laughs> okay. Now, how'd you like a cup of tea? I envy you, Grace. The travel? Oh, there's so much to see, so much to do. And the grass is always greener. Now, don't tell me you would have ever traded what this represents. In the blink of an eye. For the right thing. What would that be? No. Nothing. But there was a time. I can't imagine anything being better than traveling around the whole world. Of course you can, but you will. Emma, how about warm that up for you? Thanks. There's just something in the way she looks at him, Lloyd. I mean, you can just tell she cares. She's proud. She's as proud as we are. Probably pretty proud of all of them to turn out. Well, I guess. She did have pictures of other students in with the uh, snaps of her family. She even had one of you. Me? Mm -hmm. Can't recall my ever being much of a student. Well, she said you were. Well, that was a long time ago. Well, she told Lon you were one of those young, gifted people who never had the opportunity to explore his potential. Well, that's right. Well, and on the way home, Lon said he thinks that may be why you seem so distant to him lately. Maybe you envy what he's doing. Is there any truth to that? Could be, I suppose. Now, don't you go playing word games with me, Lloyd Wales. And you might not use many words at one time, but you know exactly what each one means when it comes out of your mouth. You mean like you and the curtains? Slip covers and the new paint. You want to talk, Emma? I do. I want to talk about the bruises you've been getting and the infections and how tired you've been. I want to talk about the pills you take. Lord. I went down to the pharmacy and I talked to Doug Bunting and he told me what the Percodan was for. And then he told me that that purine stuff was for a disease. And I talked to Doc Hendricks. He said he couldn't tell me anything until he discussed it with you, until you said it was all right. Is it all right, Em? Yes. Isn't it something we ought to talk about? You won't tell Lon, will you? If you can trust Doc Hendricks, you ought to be able to trust me. Oh, Lord, hold me. <laughs> I've been to the library, too. Leukemia. How long have you known? Not long. Summer. How long? Not long. State finals. Lonnie Wells versus Ship Wells. <laughs> we scored! We did it, boy! We did it! We win!
just a fool. I fool in life. I think it's where I got stuck last time, too. That's right, you did. Well, can I help you? I just want to thank you for helping Roy with that history report. Oh, I didn't think anybody was supposed to know about that. He told me when he had to go home. He went home? For the weekend. He was supposed to take me to the flicks tonight, too. The wild one's playing. Have you seen it? No. Marlon Brando, he's the most. Yeah, I, I hear he's pretty good. I, I haven't seen it so much. Can I help you, please? I, I gotta keep hustling here. I'll have a coffee. Coffee, okay. How late do you have to work? Tonight? Uh, 7.30. Show doesn't start too late. Why don't we go together? Together? You worried about Roy? Well... Why would he be mad? It's not like you asked me out or anything. Uh, it's just something we both want to do. Don't we? Oh, yeah. Sure. Good. It might be kind of nice to leave it down, don't you think? Too bright. You, you want to trade sides? No, this is fine. You could put the speaker inside. Oh. Right. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'll hold it for you. What? Well, you were up the window. Oh. You'll find that in advertising a certain number of questions at the snack bar, you won't be able to decide what to ask for first. Kiss me. All of your snack bar favorites are there, including fresh peanuts, hot popcorn, and candy of all kinds. And believe us, you've never eaten better hot dogs. Mr. Frank, you want something from the snack bar? No. Back. Come back. There's more room. Oh, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm sorry. What's the matter? Bonnie Joe. What? <laughs> no, it, it's, it's wrong. What's wrong? No, not you, not you. I mean, you're, you're fine. I, it, just, just us. I, I mean me. What? I, I can't. You can't? What do you mean you can't? I, I mean, I, I, I can't. I, I can't do this. Come here. One minute left to top off the evening with a big tomorrow snack bar. No, no. What's the matter with you? I don't know. I do. I thought you were too goody-goody. Bonnie Joe, that listen. Listen, you're a talker, all right, a real big talker. I, I never said anything. You said plenty. Bonnie Joe, I never told you. You knew what you were doing, going out, coming here. You knew. Now I know why you were so shy, don't I? Oh, Bonnie Joe! Get out! Oh, Bonnie Joe, wait a minute, okay? Just listen. All right, I'm sorry. I really am. I didn't mean Get to. Get away from me! 
for me. I mean it. Hey, Bunny Joe. Just get away from me. Get out. Here? Get out. Bunny Joe. Hey. Bunny Joe. Oh, great. Bunny Joe. Come on. I'm sorry. Enjoy the show. Wait! How am I supposed to... Get home. Get home. Right. Lloyd? There are other specialists. We go to... What's the name of that place back east? That clinic. We'll see whoever it takes. Pay whatever they Lloyd, want. Lloyd, Lloyd, please don't. Now, this is the 20th century, the age of miracles. They could do anything. Shut now. up! Please, Lloyd. I can't make it if you can't. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I want Lon home. No. Yeah, he want to be with you, Ann. Lloyd, Lonnie's life is just beginning. And it's the life we always wanted for him. Now, we'll do what we have to do. Emma. And Lonnie will just keep on doing what he has to do. Emma. Now, his education is the one thing we can give him that nobody can ever take away. We can't take it away from him now. Lloyd, we can't. Well, stay out of the trees till you know you've got the lane. Quit! Watch the hands, Gibbs. Hustle, Wells. Yeah, come on, Wells. Hustle. You're good at that when I'm not around, right? Shake them, Wells. Shake them. I'll hustle no score, though, right, Wells? Back Wells. off, Gibbs. You okay, Wells? Yeah. Listen, you two got something going. You gotta get later. something going, Candy. You couldn't get it going with her, could you? Gibbs. Come on, let's go, Cupcake. Gibbs, move it out ten laps. Stop it! Who are you talking to? Me. Well! Well! Wells. Corbett Mounts gives off the squad. Old man Davis wants to see you Monday. I don't know. Well, what? It's your scholarship. I don't know if I even belong here at all, Brad. Of course you belong here. What would you be doing if you weren't here? I don't know. I never even thought about anything else. Maybe I should have. Maybe that's what's wrong. Wrong? How well is the only thing that's wrong is you should have knocked that flake on his can. Why'd you let him put you down like that? Because he had a right. Why? Because of Bonnie Joe Jensen? I knew how he felt about her, Brad. Him and half the campus. It was wrong. So you say you're sorry and get your tail back out to practice on Monday? I can't. Not after what he said. Look, that bull he was throwing, nobody was buying that. Forget about it. It wasn't bull. Couldn't do it. Lonnie, every chick doesn't hit every guy the same way, you know? Ever happened to you? Well, no. Anyone else you know of? No. And you took out Bonnie Joe? Well, yeah, but. Listen. How about if I line something up for you tonight? Okay. 
Okay, it was a bad idea. Yeah, bad idea. Brad, I appreciate what you're doing for me. I, I gotta get all these other tables set up, okay? You wanna sleep at the apartment? No, thank you. Come on, what are you gonna do? Go back to the boarding house and bunk with the flake? I don't know. Man, you don't even know your own name right now. Hey, here's the key. Use it. What about your sister? Yeah, she's going off to a seminar somewhere. I won't be home till late, so don't wait up. Thanks, Brett. Hey, you change your mind about the flake. I'll hold your coat. Not in. Well, uh, you know when he'll be back? I see. Well, this is his father. I, I want to leave a message. Tell him I want him home on tomorrow's train. It's important. Yeah, tell him that, too. That's right. Tomorrow's train. <laughs> Brad? It's just me. Oh, hi. Uh, Brad said you wouldn't be home tonight. I... Oh, well, it got so late, I decided not to go. Oh. Uh, I can clear out of here. What happened? My roommate trouble. Yeah. Might be time to find a new one. Might be time to pack it in. What? Well, I thought you liked it here. Oh, well, I do. I, I do. But, um, I don't know. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm dumping all my problems on you. I'm sorry. I just better go. Go where? Uh, I'll find someplace. <laughs> I got an idea. Why don't you go with me? Well, the seminars at Lake Hollister? Ever been there? No. Oh, it's quiet and peaceful. It's a good place to think. Well, they got plenty of rooms and a discount rate for students. Well, if you need a loan, I, I can cover you till we get back. No, no, that's okay. I, I've got money. Uh, I, I just thought, you know, you, uh, well, if, if, if it's okay with you, I'd, 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 I'd love to. To, uh, you know, see the lake and all. We've got a lake at home. Beautiful lake. It, I sometimes go there when I have to uh, sort out my problems and, and stuff. Well, then let's go. Okay. Okay. father never went to college? No. My dad had an older brother, my Uncle Finley. Yeah. Well, he went on to college. And the deal was that my dad would work to help him through. And then afterwards, he'd work to help my dad get through. Well, my dad worked and sent Finley his money, but when Finley graduated, it was during the Depression. 
and uh, he got this girlfriend of his pregnant, and they got married, and so. So you think your your father resents you now for what you're doing? You think that's possible? Well, I suppose. I, I really wanted to share this with him, you know? I mean, I really did, Carol. It's a big adjustment. Leaving home, I mean. It takes everybody some getting used to. Even parents. When when you left, was it was it hard? Well, when I left, I went to live with somebody else. The guy in the picture? Picture? One in your place? You know, that guy in you? Looked like you're on vacation or something. I don't know. I figured it was a honeymoon or something. Yes. Dusty. We went to Hawaii. Hmm. What happened? Normandy. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Carol. Oh, it's all right. I was sorry, too, for myself. For a long time. Oh, hey, that meeting's about to start. Yeah. Um, thanks. For what? Well, talking to a kid. <laughs> We're all kids, Lon. Some of us are just older. <laughs> May I? Sure. <laughs> Anything you didn't know before? Huh. Couple things. Yeah. How about you? Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah? Like? Let me ask you something first. What's that? Why'd you ask me here? I told you. It's a good place to think. Well, then I think it's because you feel sorry for me. <laughs> no, no, I'm not the type to feel sorry for people. No, huh? No. <laughs> well, then why? I like you. Well, uh, how do you like me? I, I mean, uh, the same way I, I like you. What do you mean? <laughs> Come on, Carol. matter with me there's nothing the matter with you yes there is I, I thought I don't know what I thought I'm feeling so many things I don't even understand right now I'm sorry I'm very I'm, I'm gonna leave what well, I, I can drive you back no I'll uh, take a bus well you don't have to do that I can Carol please you've done enough thanks okay Okay.
Lonnie. Where the hell are you? What? Hold on. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm at a pay telephone. I can't hear you too well. What'd you say? I left word for you to get home. Yeah, yeah I, I know. I got the message that... I got... Hey, please don't do that, Cletus. Dad, listen to me. No, now you listen. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you get your tail out of it and get on home. Dad, wait a minute. I... You be on that train. <laughs> Hello, Lonnie. Hey, Mr. Sears. I understand you're knocking him dead up there. Getting by. Your daddy's waiting. I see him. Thank you. Where's mom? She's been sick. Again? the reason I call. She needs to see you. What do you mean? Is something... What I mean is what I say. Seems maybe you've been forgetting about that lately. Get in. She's all right, then? It's nothing serious? Doc Henderson's looking after her. She's got medicine. Got one son, though. Yeah, that'd be the best medicine she could have. Mm, what a wonderful surprise. Your daddy told me what you uh, said about wanting to come home. Now, what he actually said was how much he missed your cooking. So why don't you get him fed while I go work on the corral? Well, let me fix something for you, too. No, I'm not hungry. Uh, feed him. Split pea soup on the stove. Great. Tired of the Bubba burgers, are you? Beginning to feel like one. Well, I'm not sure that's reason to spend good money coming home. But I'm happy to see you. wrong with her dad? Told you. Been down a while. She looks awful. Yeah? She says she feels better. You told her it was my idea to come home. Why? She missed you. Why didn't you just tell me how sick she was? Can't always find you these days. I'm sorry for that? Well, that's up to you. So, sorry for what? For not checking on the two of you all the time? When was I supposed to start doing that? I mean, you're my, you're my parents, Dad. You're the grown-ups. Just because I go away, we have to go through some kind of role reversal or something? Role reversal? I'll grant you're learning things I never even heard of. I hate to think you're forgetting the things your mom and me spent a long time teaching you ourselves. Dad. I... Look, you want to talk, Lon? Your mom's been wanting to talk with you for quite a spell. I need to talk to you. Your mom's the one needs your home. You bastard. Get in the house, Lon. Get. Oh, damn. Lon, 
Thanks for coming. Just wish I could do it more often, that's all. Well, you better go. See you, Mom. See you! something to say to you. Your mother... Your mo Well, you're coming home meant a lot to her. I I'm sorry for putting the spurs to you the way I did. It's okay. Sorry for what I said to you, too. What was that? Well, me. Gotta go. Right. See you, boy. I guess you'd call it. You're not dropping out of school, are you? No. No, uh, I'm going to finish out the semester anyway. And then? I'm not sure. I'm trying to look at all the alternatives. For life? I've got my military obligations. Thought maybe I should enlist now and use that time to find out what I want to be when I grow up. You want my reaction to that? No, ma'am. I can guess what that would be. We're not in any war right now, though. Lonnie, maybe we should continue that talk we started at Lake Hollister. I think I embarrassed the both of us enough up there, don't you? There's no need to be embarrassed about anything. Sure. As sure as I am about the Army. How could I say that to him, Carol? Maybe he deserved it. He's my father. Well, he's obviously having a hard time coping with something right now. <laughs> yeah, me. You're changing right now, Lon. That's what life is, change. Nothing ever stays the same. Mm. Kind of liked it the way it was, that's all. Yeah, but you can't control everything. You should have learned that with your roommate and that girl you were with. What was her name, Bonnie Jo? Brad told you about that? I wanted to know. Oh, <laughs> great. 
Well, that's just great. I thought I could trust him. You can trust him. I am me. I just better go. I'm not going to let you run away long. Especially not to some recruiting office. The answers aren't out there. They're inside you. What's inside me right now is all fouled up. You must think I'm the biggest baby you've ever known. No. No, you're very much like, like somebody I loved very much. How old are you, Lon? Eighteen. Dusty was just a few months older. And going off to war. To die. I hardly got a chance to know him. But I liked what I knew. And you... You remind me of him. I do? Yes. Very much. How? Well, you're kind and you're gentle and caring. And that's why your first time couldn't be with a girl like that, in a place like that. The experience was distasteful to you because... because there has to be more. There has to be a lot more for anyone with any depth. Your roommate wouldn't know that. I didn't fight back. Oh, that doesn't make you any less of a man. <laughs> well, the guys thought so. Coach did too, I think, Brad. Well, they wouldn't know who is a real man and who isn't. That is something only a woman knows. You asked me a question I never answered. What? You asked me if, if I liked you the same way you liked me, remember? Carol. <laughs> what do you think the answer is, Lon? Yes. Yes, Lon. Exactly the same way.
And? You knew, didn't you? You knew she was staying. Come on, Dad. Talk to me. Damn you! Talk to me! No, I, I don't want to hear anything you have to say to me, okay? You listen to me. I'm going to be at the motel. And after the services, I'm leaving. Don't look for me to come back. You listening to me? Sorry. What is it? Your roommate kicked this to Brad. He drove me down. It's from your mother. by now that we have <laughs> seen each other last time in this life. I want you to understand why I chose to say goodbye to you in this way. I'm sorry. my reasons for that choice in a way that can make clear the desperate need to end my time with you and your father with some degree of dignity. But the, the most, most important, important thing, thing for me to, to know, know as I leave you is that you understand how hard this has been for him. His not sharing time with you was really his way of trying to be sure I had as much time with you as possible. He's a simple man, Lon. You know that. 
and that was simply his way of keeping us together as much as possible without breaking his vow to me that he wouldn't tell you about this dreadful disease called leukemia. Before I go on, I want your promise to forgive him if he hurt you in any way while he was trying to help me. I want your promise too that you will look after him now that I no longer can. I think we ought to build ourselves a cabin up here. What? Yeah, we could uh, uh, drop it down that stand of trees right over there. A cabin, huh? <laughs> Might take us all summer, though. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I, I think... Uh, I think she, she would have loved it. <laughs> Say goodbye, Dad. Yeah, it sure does. I'm sorry, but I don't think what she did was right. I don't either, Lon. That wasn't your life or mine. It was hers. Right and wrong. Any subject. That's something we all gotta find for ourselves. You know, most of us go through life thinking we're the only ones that ever did something or other that we've been told is wrong. The only one to commit some particular sin. <laughs> I don't want you to ever feel like that. I did do wrong by you, though, Dad. Do what, growing up? Fooling around. Well, you're back here working twice as hard. Well, <laughs> I had twice as much to work for. And I just hope that this woman you met cares half as much about you as my first woman cared about me. Well, I sure know how much Mom cared about you. I'm not talking about your mother. Gotta be a first time for everyone, son. D did Mom know about her? No. Nope. Nobody knew. <laughs> no. <laughs> you think maybe you have to leave home just to find out things about your own family? Maybe. Dad, you know everything there is to know about me. I mean, you've been with me all the time, but... God oh, darn, there's so much I don't even know about you. All you have to know is... that you're not alone. Not in anything you ever do. You mean like with Carol? That's what's troubling you right now, isn't it? Well, yeah. I think Mom would have understood. About you, maybe. About me, I don't know. She knew that you loved her, though, Dad. Yeah. She knew how much I loved her. What about the other woman? Did you love her, too? At the time. I think I couldn't live another day when she told me we had to stop seeing one another. Shows you how wrong I was and how right she was. And then maybe being older gave her the edge. Being a whole hang of a lot more experienced in what makes people tick. Probably all the traveling she'd done. Suffering too, I suppose. She used to travel? Mm, all over the world. I used to wish I'd been half the places she'd been. Knew half as much. I wanted to be older, smarter, richer. 
just plain better so I could be with her forever. I know her, don't I, Dad? You do. You bet, Lollin. I know what it's like to feel you've disappointed a father. <laughs> when I came back here to this town that my father's family had put on the map, after all the opportunities that he'd made available to me through friends in the East, well, he was just dead certain I was a failure. And of course, that meant he'd failed too. You stayed here anyway, huh? Well, I learned a lot out there. Especially about myself. I, I knew I didn't like the pain in a world that never quite accepted me. I, I knew I belonged here. And I was right. You never missed those opportunities you mentioned to me? Well, they didn't match the opportunities that I found here. No, it was a joy to share what I'd learned with the young people born in a small, unsophisticated community like this. I found a couple of other important things here, too, like, like acceptance and, uh, and love. Dad? Yes. It was a love so, so fine. But it couldn't have gone on from there. Couldn't have been more than it was. Because of what people would say if they knew, huh? If one parent had found out that I was in love with an ex-student, they all would have felt that no child was safe in my hands. No, that love would have come between me and the, the young minds I wanted to help, but, but it was mainly because your father had already lost so much of what he wanted in life and had already assumed such a burden that, uh, well, I just couldn't handicap him with a reputation he, he never would have been able to live down in a town this small. He's the reason you helped me so much, isn't he? I mean, why you got me ready for college. I knew what it meant to your father. It's what he always counted on and never had a chance to try. Yeah. You know, it just might be that you're the first one of all of us who's really ready to leave this place, Lon. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, your roots are deep and firm. Your views are uncluttered. I've been feeling pretty cluttered lately. Well, the emotions we've all felt, part of uh, growing up, breaking home ties, that's exactly what your father's trying to make you see right now. Why, he told me about you? Yeah, and called to tell me that you'd be coming over here with a can opener. <laughs> Not always pretty girls, uh, you know that, nor a happy one. <laughs> There's a part of all of us we don't want revealed for some reason or other. Then we grow old and get freckles and warts and lines in places we certainly don't want them. We also begin to realize maybe we're not as wonderful and as good as we wanted to be or even should be, but well, no use dwelling on that. No, it's better to think of all the beautiful things Things that put a smile on your face. You know, if you concentrate on those things, Lon, you'll find it makes whatever you do in life a whole lot easier. You may even find that the people you live with and work with and share with have a better time of it, too. Better times, lots of smiles, better memories. And in the end, they're about the most important things we have left. Memories. <laughs>